the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Hello and welcome back. Today is Sunday, May 23rd, 2021, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign update. So expect DraftKings to restate their non-earnings uh, due to adjustments required because of the SPAC shortcut. Uh, they lost more than $1.2 billion, which is twice their revenue. Revenue and earnings are not the same thing. This is not being told honestly in the public domain. I'll get to that in a second. California lost population for the first time ever. Uh, we'll see if that's just a blip. Uh, I have a friend who uh, just recently sold their house there for 15% over the asking price and had lo- a line of bidders out the door, so I, I wouldn't be too quick to call uh, California done and over. And on top of that, they also just uh, reported a budget surplus. So DraftKings uh, missed by 100% again on their non-earnings during the most profitable period, including the Super Bowl. So it's only going to get worse from here. Uh, this is as good as it gets this particular uh, season because it includes the peak gambling action, including the Super Bowl. So they're doing a fine job of losing money. And I'll tell you, there's not going to be any profit in the future either because of the offshore books, specifically the Costa Rican books and the UK books. And then you have UK books operating in Costa Rica. We talked about this 20 years ago. Uh, in Costa Rica because offshore would always have a permanent advantage due to the fact that they don't have tax and reporting, which is a, definitely a huge a huge issue. You can just track comments in the public domain. And the Wire Act was the big threat. Uh, nobody cared about PASPA. In fact, we almost never talked about it. I think we talked about it twice the whole time I was down there. But the Wire Act was the one that struck fear in the hearts of the offshore operators because They can refer uh, criminal complaints to Maine Justice, shut them down, basically anywhere offshore, seize their assets. So you can't have it both ways. The issue here is that if they don't enforce the Wire Act, then uh, they allow the offshore market to continue to have a a preference. If they do enforce the Wire Act, then they have to shut everyone down, including the onshore books, because you can't have it both ways. Um, all that being said, I have no trust in the legal system or lawyers. They do nothing but lie and manipulate information. They're going to continue to do that. They're going to continue to bribe judges and all this sort of nonsense. So uh, it's very much like the cigarette fight. Uh, you know, still to this day, you have cigarettes being sold when everybody uh, knows that they are disease causing and so forth. So uh, it really comes down to beating them in the marketplace, you know, beating them in the in the public market rather than depending on the law. The law is a joke at this point. It's a complete joke. So uh, just beat them at the market. That's what we need to do. So back to DraftKings for a second. Um, Yeah, $600 million in gross revenues. Okay, that's gross revenues, $1.2 billion in loss. That's losing $2 for every $1 you take in. So uh, the reason, again, for this is that they are having to buy customers at an increasing loss. Why? Because the rest of the marketplace is not going to watch you steal their customers. So every time they make some sort of a gain, all of the other sports books that have been operating all over the world are going to adjust to keep from losing their, their customers. And sports bookers are notoriously not loyal, goes along with the rest of their ethics. Uh, they don't uh, stick around. They go where the best offer is. So they hop, hop, hop from one book to the next. The reason I know this is because Oftentimes, brands down in, in Costa Rica would create multiple skins, multiple looks and feels, and they were basically the same operation to try to capture that jumping that takes place. So um, it's it's just there's no profit here. Uh, and the market is waking up to that. That's why DraftKings stock continues to sink. It's going to continue to sink. It may have moments of what it looked like uh, life. Well, we call dead cat bounces in the in the stock trading parlance, but it's not happening. Inflation is coming. Can't be any other way because of all the massive uh, spending that's been going on, uh, basically printing money all over the world, not just here in the United States. Um, I don't expect it will be, uh, you know, hyperinflation or anything like that, but it's going to tick up uh, a bit. Uh, Again, the dollarization of the world, uh, the U.S. dollar being the reserve currency of, of everything allows us to do things with the dollar nobody else can do. This is something that uh, Warren Buffett talked about. 
And he's right. Of course, he's right about that. Um, you know, we have special privilege. I've actually said this even before he said that publicly. I've said this for a long time. Um, the U.S. dollar has a, a privileged place in the world because essentially we print when we print currency, you know, when we inflate, we inflate the entire world economy. So the world economy is our economy. So if you look at the top headline numbers, go to the Bank for International Settlements. If you've never heard of that before, Bank for International Settlements, that's the central bank of all central banks. And pretty much the amount of cash that you see route through there, that is just about equivalent to the U.S. dollar's um, ability to, to inflate worldwide, with the exception of the very tiny handful of countries that don't accept dollars or don't put them in their banks. So... Um, Looks like Elon had a change of heart um, on on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Maybe not all cryptocurrencies yet, but I think he's going to evolve all the way to see that there's a problem here. Interestingly, I had sent a message to my friend uh, at SpaceX the day before that the announcement came that Tesla was pulling Bitcoin. Um, now you have uh, you have China also uh, saying that they're going to really clamp down hard on this. Go back to the original thing I've said for almost 10 years now, almost at the point that crypto came out, that it is a threat to national sovereignty. And I think that the, uh, the central bankers are finally realizing this. So, um, UI claims are still, uh, up. They're still ho much higher than normal, but last week's numbers were a bit, um, a bit better. So there is some improvement, but we're still far from out of this. Um, we need to keep these programs going until everything is fully restored. Again, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. But I uh, I think that um, Biden's on the right track, and it's just a matter of staying the course here. So also, the uh, Biden reversed the social media, uh, an, an order on social media that Trump had put out. Um, you know, without getting into the weeds on this, this is essentially going to tighten up the uh, – liabilities for lies, lies in the public domain through social media and other places, uh, Communications Decency Act, that which is absolutely misnamed, uh, that sort of thing. You're going to see this being addressed. Uh, it's time to to bring the liars to bear. I mean, it br bring, the, bring the hammer down on them. I mean, you, you don't get to do that in anything else in this life without liability. So, um, all right. So China warns, I already said that, um, they doubled down on this statement just to make sure everybody understood the clarity of it. That's why you're seeing the market start to crater. Um, you know, this is a fear and greed game. So the fear is obviously kicking in back to the wire act for a second. So the wire act, um, first second circuit restated earlier this year that it applies to sports gambling and everybody pretending like, uh, it doesn't exist is absolutely ridiculous. It does exist. It's more than 60 years old. Uh, Biden just put out and uh, floated a trial balloon of an idea for a 15 percent across the board uh, taxes on the corporate side. Uh, this is, you know, I think this is right and maybe even universally right. Um, one better if anybody's listening. And I, I've said this in the past. I'll say it again. A 10 percent VAT value added tax across the board. Uh, if we could get uniformity across uh, all jurisdictions, not just in the U.S., and that's going to be a nightmare. But a VAT is easier to administer. It's a consumption side tax. You could wipe out all the income taxes and all the other stuff, and you could do it with a 10% VAT across the board, and the, the, the treasuries would overflow governments everywhere. So uh, Roe v. Wade is, uh, is, is being challenged, uh, the 6 to 3 uh, Supreme Court, conservative cons Supreme Court, the most conservative it's been in about a hundred years. Um, I see this being taken down. Uh, I am unapologetically against abortion. No exceptions. No, no exceptions. None. Okay. None. Abortion is murder. Full stop. Abortion is murder. Full stop. If you, uh, if you, all you have to do is look at the process. If you don't see a murder taking place, then you're complicit or you're blind or you're willingly blind, but that's what it is. So, Roe v. Wade is uh, being attacked again. It's it's just a matter of time before it's taken down. This Mississippi challenge is probably going to go through. If not, the next one is going to go through after it. It's it's just a matter of time. There's a pipeline of cases. One of them is going to be decided in, uh, against Roe and overturn Roe. Now, that law is about 50 years old. So that's being enforced, right? Or, you know, it's allowing abortion mills to run all around the country. Yet, 
a 60-year-old law, which is more than 10 years older than, than Roe or approximately 10 years older than Roe, is being ignored as if it doesn't exist. With this propagation and lie about sports gambling being legal at the federal level, it is not 100% 0.0 legal. It is not legal at the federal level. All that PASPA did was give the permit to the states to decide individually. But a, a an older law, PASPA's 92, 61. So that's 30 years, right? Roughly 30 years ago. So that's that's the law that they're acting as if that's the one that really uh, matters when the, the law that is twice as old as that law, okay, the 1961 Wire Act is still firmly in place and restated. And once again, there is no way whatsoever to not break the Wire Act by using mobile devices. It is absolutely impossible. The only way that the states can do this and not violate the Wire Act is if they literally make you go down and pay in cash. You can't even use the banking system, okay? You can't charge it on your credit card. You can't do any of those things. You have to physically go to a casino inside your state without using the wires, and the wires have been re reinterpreted through case law to mean including wireless, okay? So you cannot, you cannot do anything other than go to a physical land-based casino in the state and place your sports bets. That's it. You can't transmit the information. You can't transmit the money. You can't transmit the bets. You can't do any of those things across state lines. And the banking system is, is absolutely, you cannot use the banking system at all. At all. Okay. So this is really a hypocrisy at the highest possible level. So on one hand, you permit the murdering of children through Roe v. Wade, which is a 50 year old decision. And you have a 60 year old decision, uh, anti corruption that you pretend like it doesn't exist. Okay. So either we have laws or we don't have laws. Apparently at this point, it's one foot in and one foot out. That's got to change. If not, this system will collapse. This cannot continue. You cannot have corruption like this on settled law at this level and expect the administration or expect the system to stand. It will not stand. It will come down. History has shown over and again, when you lose the rule of law, you lose everything. So that's just, this is going into the archives of podcast history. So one day somebody will look back on this and see that I was dead right. So solar storms. So uh, there's some discussion about that. We're at the 11 year sunspot cycle peaking again. This is something I dealt with when I was a kid in amateur radio. Um, once again, I've said this over and again, over and again, over and again, as it pertains to crypto, no electricity, poof, it's all gone. Okay. Don't say that won't happen because the Carrington event looked that up. All you need is a big version of that or a very targeted Carrington event type thing that hits a major, major data infrastructure point in the internet and the whole thing comes crashing down and that's it. Your crypto turns into what it really is, which is just a bunch of hexadecimal numbers in a database somewhere. So thank you for your time. Have a great day and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye now.